The Kalam cosmological argument is... Can I try it? Can I try to... to let's go. To explain it. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. So, so I went to uh, Sheikh's class, uh, I think, a few days ago. And uh, let, let, let me try to... Um, uh, to present it, yeah. So if there's any anything uh, faulty, please let the audience know, lah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very I'm humble of you. <laughs> this is the mark of a good student. Well, yeah, a good well. student is somebody who is happy to make to make a mistake, uh, and yeah. um, and I've made many mistakes. In my yeah, life. We, all, we all do, yeah. Too. yeah. Uh, so Kalam cosmological argument is one of the main and perhaps the most popular form to prove God's existence. Uh, yeah, um, the the I think how do how we present it is like this is consists of two premises and one conclusion. Premise number one: uh, everything that began to exist has a cause. That's mm -hmm. premise number one. Number two: the universe began to exist. Yeah, therefore the conclusion is that the universe has a cause. Uh, it, was that right? That's perfect. Allah. Nothing to correct. <laughs> no, no, you did a great job. No, 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 no. Can I put a little bit of commentary on it? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Do tafsir. I know it is. Was it tafsir? Yeah, tafsir. <laughs> I'll, I'll do a, I'll do a shot. Okay. <laughs> so I'll start at the end. Yeah. So um, in the Muslim tradition of Mantik, mm -hmm. we actually switch the major and minor premises. Ah, okay. So uh, William Lane Craig is Aristotelian. So he sa he starts with everything that begins to exist has a cause mm -hmm. called the major premise. We put that second. Ah, so okay. for us, we put the minor premise first and the major premise second, which is okay. It's a minor thing, but I think it's actually uh, clearer as the way that you think. The other thing is, I think it's, uh, you correctly sta said that it is the most popular argument for the existence of God. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a reason for that. And so it has a history. And the history is that, um, is that in the 20th century, Scientists who are atheists, who are materialists, they made a scientific discovery that shook their materialism and atheism to the core. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to believe it. But, and that discovery was that the universe began to exist. So even Einstein, right? Didn't believe, didn't believe that universe began to exist. He believed he in did. static, eternal universe, wasn't it? Yeah, so the implications of his theory of relativity, the straightforward implication was that the universe began to exist. Oh. He looked at it, said, that can't be right. <laughs> right. That can't be right. And so he the biggest inserted, planet, right? yeah, he inserted, uh, he inserted something into the equations so that it wouldn't give that thing. And then later when, when, um, when scientific, when scientists covered it, as you yeah. said, he said George, this was not George biggest Lamar, Yeah. Belgian priest. Yeah. 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 So, so when the Big Bang was discovered, and the, and the evidence for this is overwhelming, and uh, so when the when the evidence for the Big Bang was discovered, suddenly now, today as a result of that, scientists believe that the universe has an age. Mm -hmm. It's about fourteen billion years old, three point seven um, billion years old, and so in all science textbooks, they'll all say the age of the universe is thirteen point seven billion years. Mm. And this is revolutionary because throughout human history, even people who believe in the existence of God, they believe that the universe is static. So you, because you look up, you see the stars rising and setting at the same, uh, at the same places every single, every single night. It looks continuous. It looks like it's not changing. So they, they didn't used to believe that the universe is expanding. So they would believe that God created the universe in six days. But then after that, it's fixed. Ah, so okay. so now when but now what we believe is that the universe is continuously expanding. It's a dynamic universe, and this expansion is such. It's not just at the edges, but it's actually every two points in space, at every moment in time. Mm. There's new space that is being created in between in between them. It's so you actually walking. see the <laughs> creation. <laughs> happening before your eyes at every single, yeah. you know. Uh, so this was very, very interesting because, I mean, even when we take Kalam cosmological argument, yeah, premise number one in Islamic version, yeah. yeah. So it, the, the biggest challenge was to prove that the universe began to exist, wasn't it? Yes. So it was the, the biggest challenge of cosmological argument. And we had the classical 
schemes of, for example, Jauhar and Arad, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, because the philosopher, the philosopher, they they didn't believe that the universe began to exist. That's I mean, right. so they have this weird conception of, I mean, static God, uh, divine simplicity, and so on and so forth. Uh, so we can say that modern science has helped theology, for example, has helped the argument. Modern science has has, and so so nowadays, nobody believe that universe is static anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So so modern science has completely revolutionized that. So I mean, perhaps we, uh, we ought to do some dawah to make people realize that with this concomitant, that you believe that universe began to exist, and you can lead to God essentially. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, what uh, I do in why Islam is true, which is for the average educated, intelligent person. Uh, in the Kalam cosmological argument, I don't use the traditional Muslim philosophical argument for uh, the beginning of the universe because now it's so simple. Yeah, you know, everybody believes it. Big thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so you you need to learn the scientific evidence. So now it's part of being a Muslim theologian to know science, science. Well, sure. no, understand <laughs> understand the mass mm-hmm. and be able to articulate and engage with people on uh, the evidence for the Big Bang. Uh, and um, and not just science, but also math. Mm-hmm. Because the, uh, so the thing about, the way that we came here was that we're talking about contempor- contemporary manifestations. So, uh, so the William Lane Craig, who's a Christian theologian, it's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate that the person who introduced our argument into modern philosophy was a Christian and not a Muslim. Yeah. Uh, and because <laughs> this argument historically was only made by the Muslim. Indeed, yeah. Right. Thomas Aquinas did not believe that the that the universe, you could prove that the universe began to exist philosophically. Oh, no. Ma- Moses made Ma- Maimonides, the main Jewish theologian who studied in the Muslim world, also did not believe. So the the argument for the existence of God from the beginning of the universe is a uniquely Muslim argument. And that's why Craig, as a Christian, that's why he named it the Kalam mm-hmm. cosmological argument for the existence of God. Because nobody made philosophical arguments for the beginning of the universe except the Muslim. So, uh, so when he introduced it in 1979 into modern philosophy, because of the evidence for the Big Bang, because everybody is making these things, it was a big thing. Mm-hmm. And it became the most widely talked about argument. But then there's, it's very fascinating as Muslims to look, study this because when you look at where the philosophical discussions have gone, they've gone to the evidence for the Big Bang, uh, which is scientific, mathematical, and they've gone to the philosophy of mathematics, theories of infinity. And that's also important for, for people to, uh, to study. So I'm, I feel blessed that I had the opportunity to study science to study the theory of computation, to study linear algebra, to study step theory, Pleasure. understand all of these, uh, because it's only through that, that that as a theologian, I can understand and engage with these kinds of things. So theologians need to study science now in order to do theology.